Okay, in this demo, I'm going to reproduce the transaction history for the Bold Ape Yacht Club, in particular for this token 7961. So notice that in this transaction, we have a lot of information like transaction history, which platform is actually traded on, what's the Ethereum um, value at that time, and what's the Ethereum USD dollars. And also, we actually need to get domain name for each of the address if there is any register on the ENS. So let's see what we can do to produce this. We built this website to have a side-by-side -side comparison between the solutions with and without that block. Without that block, you actually need to call several different endpoints to assemble the exactly same page as EtherScan. The first API call I need to call is an LT transaction history. So I call this API endpoint, then I can find the from address to address when it happened, what's the amount of the transfer, etc. But I don't have the USD values. So the next call is that I need to can call a price endpoint. This price endpoint can only get Ethereum price at the current time. So um, you cannot know the Ethereum price at historical value, which actually that provides. The third step is actually we get the platform related information. So we know exactly what uh, this what platform this token was traded at, and then we can actually integrate it into the in the in the tables. And the last step is that we actually want to get a domain name for each address. So we bunch for each every single address in the transaction history. We bundle the address and call the EIS service to get to understand uh, what's the domain name. So at the end of this, uh, we generate the table without that block. And then um, notice that this this whole API call took us almost a full second, 150 lines of code, and it made uh, like a 60 RPC calls. But using that block, it's only one RPC call. It took like 25 lines of code and 100 milliseconds latency. Uh, you get exactly the same and even better result with that block. Without that block, the first API call I need to get is the transaction history, get from address to address and the time of the tr transaction. Then I need to call the price endpoint to get the USD dollar values. I need to call the different endpoint to get which platform it was traded on. And this last part is called ENS domain name from ENS endpoint. Now this end, uh, API endpoint provide other information. That's why I need to call full endpoint. With that block, we pre-process the data and put all the relevant data in one place for you. So instead of calling four different API calls sequentially and get all of, lots of data and assemble it in, in a readable format, we do it for you. We also wrote a block to explain the, the philosophies and the design trade-off behind that block. Now let's take a look under the hood what actually happens. First, this shows the transformation logic, how this table or data set is generated. In this case, we generate this data set based on Ethereum trades and the ERC721 even transfers data. Then we can know exactly what's the index for this table, how many records are there, what's the data size. Then because it's a data size, so I can call it, use my, you know, use my ways, different ways. First, in this case, I call it based on token ID, which is uh, what we actually call it in the website. But I can create, you know, call it differently. I can call it by the seller domain name and then to figure out what's actually the seller, um, you know, what this seller has to sell it to. Additionally, I can do additional filter. For example, I can call it based on the block time range. For more use case and case study, you can visit that block dot com for details. You can apply early access in the Discord channel.